where do I just want to embrace? If you want to call it extremism, mm -hmm. where do I want to embrace it and actually just wear it proudly? Mm -hmm. There it is. What's up, friends? Hello. Good to be back with you. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Tim Whitaker, the host of most of the content that you see on here. I wanted to take some time and go through this video that Paul and Morgan did responding to their participation in the Duggar documentary on Amazon. I will be honest with you. I was not super familiar with Paul and Morgan until maybe the past few days. I've heard about them through the grapevine. Most of our work is more focused on helping people find faith beyond evangelical fundamentalism, which definitely includes holding evangelicalism accountable and kind of unpacking that stuff. But also we deal more with like Christian nationalism and more of the political side of that. So I don't really watch a ton of these um, more conservative Christian influencers, but after seeing uh, Paul and Morgan and others on that Duggar documentary, uh, and then seeing their response to them being on the documentary, I thought, you know, we should probably go through this because I think it's actually a very telling response by them. If you don't know, Paul and Morgan are two, uh, they're a couple, husband and wife. I think that they have a child now, which is great. Um, and they are Christian influencers or part of this kind of bubble of, I would say conservative evangelical influencers. That's kind of putting it more mildly. Um, I would have no problem calling them fundamentalists. I think that they would really debate that term. And I do want to be, I do want to be respectful when I, you know, talk about people and I don't want to put categories onto them that maybe they don't think are truthful at the same time. When you start scrolling through like their YouTube channel, I think it's pretty clear where they land just by the names uh, of some of their videos, like sex positive, progressive Christian. Then you read the comments and they kind of say what you think. Uh, should you wear a mask? Uh, would, would Jesus wear a mask? Responding to skillets, John Cooper. Uh, videos like responding uh, to uh, Justin Bieber or Carrie Job teaming up. Um, that kind of stuff. A Christian response to Michael Gunger's dangerous tweet. Um, and then they have other videos addressing modesty culture, uh, asking strangers, should women dress modestly? Asking strangers their thoughts on kissing before marriage. I mean, I've watched a few of their videos. To me, it's pretty evident that they're essentially peddling some of the same patriarchal fundamentalism that I grew up in, but they don't see it, I think, fully that way. So I say all that to kind of give you a snapshot of who they are. And I want to go through this video that they did responding to how they felt like they were portrayed on the documentary, um, which I rewatched their episode that they were in just to make sure I have my data points right. So let's go through this. Let's hear what they have to say. We'll kind of, you know, interrupt the the video here and there. I did slightly speed it up. It's at one in, 1 1.25 speed instead of just one, just to kind of help us get through this a little bit quicker. It's a 42 minute video plus, you know, me interrupting. So right. without further ado, well, let's guys, get into this. Let's see what they had to say about being on the Some people the aren't gonna like this, but I am gonna Thunder read some document. notes that I took straight from my phone. And I know that some people won't like this because I've done this in the past and they're like, she's a fraud. She can't even just speak. She has to read from her phone, <laughs> but. That's all right. This is very much from the heart. I prayed over what I was writing out, and this is from the heart. So I wanted to make sure that I said it well and said it right. So here we go. Awesome. And throughout the video, we're going to be jumping down and, and looking at our notes. You know, we have a, a we good, got lots of notes. We got a lot to say. This is this is going to be a packed video. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we want to start out first saying. I do believe that there has been that would serious be helpful. wrongdoings <laughs> Whoops. in the IBLP. Um, we believe that they deserve to be... Back up a minute here. we got a lot to say. This is, this is going to be a packed video. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we want to start out first saying we do believe that there has been serious wrongdoings in the IBLP. Um, we believe that they deserve to be brought to light. We believe people need to be held accountable for taking God's word and twisting it, twisting it for their own power and their own gain. Um, uh, and using it and abusing it. The women and children and men who have been seriously damaged forever um, and scarred and lied to deserve to heal and find peace in all of this mess. We believe that anyone who tries to use the word of God to manipulate and control people will be held accountable, maybe in this lifetime, but most certainly in the next lifetime when they meet their maker. Um, God is the king of justice. He is the ultimate judge, and we believe justice will be served for these people who have been hurt by men and women who have used and abused the word of God. 
So definitely a, a pretty decent statement. I'm not sure if you had time to watch the documentary. I recommend that you do. I'm not going to rehash all of it, but essentially it centers around the Duggar family and their involvement in an organization called the Institute and Basic Life Principles, also known as the IBLP, uh, which was started by someone named Bill Gothard. Um, and the documentary, listen, it, it is it is damning. There's no way around it uh, of the absolute damage and abuse that was covered up in these spaces but the documentary also does a good job of showing how these uh, how how these beliefs uh by Bill Gothard and the Duggars really is is it reaches beyond just the bubble of the IBLP and the Duggars although to be fair the IBLP at one point was reaching like 2 million people so it wasn't exactly a fringe organization um we're going to share our thoughts and experiences with this docuseries, and we've got a lot to say, so buckle in. Yeah. This is a deep dive. Seriously, go ahead and, yeah, if your popcorn's not popped, just <laughs> grab a quick snack to be snacking on something to drink. <laughs> oh, no time. There's no time to pop popcorn, though. Oh, right. No time. <laughs> um, all right. So I want to start out with talking about this docuseries. Um, we believe that this docuseries and many alike, like the Secrets of Hillsong on Hulu, the Discovery Plus one on uh, Hillsong, and many others, all have a purpose, which is to reveal the wrongdoings of these churches, these people, etc., which is not a bad purpose. But here's where I feel oh boy, like here we go. completely fail. Because they are made by people who are not Christians, who maybe even have a vendetta against Christianity, every single one of these docuseries has some major problems. One being, they almost never interview people who are still firmly walking in faith with the Lord. Or Let's just stop right there because that's not true. For example, Kristen Dumez, who has been on a, uh, interviewed in both of these documentaries, she's a historian um, and she wrote the book Jesus and John Wayne, is a faithful, committed Christian. Uh, in the Hillsong documentary, they had Mike Cosper, who was the podcast host of the Christianity Today series on uh, the rise and fall of Mars Hill. So to make it seem like these people are not including Christians in the conversation is just not true, including in the Duggars uh, case. Um, the two people, I forgot their names, I think... Uh, um, maybe Jim and his partner, who, by the way, have their own allegations of abuse, are also still Christians as far as I know. So it's important to recognize that. And it is important to recognize that I'm already hearing, and I don't know these people that well, so I'm kind of going blind into this, but I'm already hearing this the same rhetoric that I hear often, which is, well, yeah, there was some wrongdoing, but this thing painted too broad of a brush um, regarding Christianity, and now I have a problem with it. Instead of saying, wow, uh, I didn't realize how deep-seated the harm and cover-up by these massively influential evangelical churches and institutions went, we need to do a deeper dive to make sure that we're getting rid of this kind of abuse in our system. So the, the perspective already starts diverting for me from where I would want to land versus where I think we're going to head during this video. If they do interview those people, um, like they interviewed us, they do not allow them to share that faith or where they're at now. Um, they don't allow the gospel to be shared. And two being the other problem is they don't allow the gospel to be shared. <laughs> These docuseries, um, this one specifically, made it very clear that not only people within the IBLP, the Institute of Basic Life Principles, but Christianity as a whole thing is wrong. And the only true option is deconstruction. Okay, that is just, again, blatantly not true. I don't, I, I mean, maybe, no, I, I, I feel confident saying that no one in that documentary said that all of Christianity is wrong. Pushing back against evangelical fundamentalism is not the same thing as pushing back against Christianity unless you are convinced that you are standing in the true Orthodox Christian faith and everyone outside of your bubble is not. So even this statement, I just find incredibly narrow and frankly ignorant. All right, there we go. So there was Morgan's opening monologue. <laughs> we're not gonna be we're not gonna be looking down and reading stuff uh, for this whole time for sure. No. Morgan, thank you though. I appreciate I appreciate you. Uh, coming up with that I, I think that that was very good so let's <laughs> let's kick things off we're about to honestly um <laughs> we're about to really go into the details we were talking to our patrons last night and i was like oh, how many details do we give and uh it was kind of clear it's like <laughs> our patrons were like all the details <laughs> and and you know it's good for things to be brought to light at the end of the day you can still you don't have to side with us you and, know yeah you might not care at all which makes me wonder why are you on this video but <laughs> it's, it's up to you guys that's in your court but um you know our side deserves to be heard uh, especially after 
the crazy way that this went down. Uh, it, man, man. It might be good to mention here that they were featured for maybe a total of four minutes in episode three. I, I don't think that they're in episode four at all, and they're definitely not in episode one or two of this Duggar documentary, and they're only featured uh, to point out how the same kind of belief system of patriarchy and submission to uh, by women to men um, and that kind of view that Bill Gothard peddled is still manifesting itself, but through a more modern take from people like Paula Morgan and other influencers. So just want to be clear about that. It's not like this documentary involved or had them uh, feature in it much besides episode three. So so let's <laughs> kick things off, Morgan, after that. Um, I want to just piggyback real quick and saying, guys, if you're watching these type of documentaries thinking, oh my goodness, I'm getting factual truth, non-biased, blah, blah, blah. These people are in it to make entertaining content first and foremost. Mm -hmm. They're in it to get watchers and make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to put a money. They know what. Well, okay. So two things can be true here, right? I, I, I want to agree and say that I don't think all media outlets have the best motivation. We live in a corporate capitalist structure and, you know, views get clicks and clicks make money. So sure, I get that. At the same time, this Duggar documentary was mostly survivor led. They interviewed people, not just people like someone like me, for example, who was never part of that institute, but people who lived it and survived it and now are telling the story. So sure, obviously during any editing process, there of course is bias. We all have a bias, but the bias seemed to me to be to expose the corruption of the Duggar family, including covering up Josh's heinous um, you know, abuses uh, and also letting the survivors explain how terrible it was to be in the IBLP. We have experienced firsthand, and I don't say this lightly, but we've experienced firsthand that integrity wasn't a leading goal for the production team behind this documentary. Mm -hmm. Take that how you want. Take that to the bank. Which but is it, not an uncommon thing in filmmaking and showmaking, as we've heard from a close friend who works in the filmmaking business. Used, used to work in <laughs> used the filmmaking. To, yeah. um, a funny thing is, as we uh, get you know, started with the beginning of the story, when we went in, uh, we were very cautious. We had plenty of conversations back and forth. We told them, guys, we are friends with someone who went on The Bachelorette. If you guys, not encouraging you to watch The Bachelorette or The Bachelor, but Luke Parker, <laughs> the Luke Parker situation where they villainized the crap out of him. And then we had him on the channel and we went into and talked about it. So we had that at the forefront of our mind, what the entertainment industry can do the agendas that they can push and turn people into certain things. Specifically Christians. Specifically mm. Christians. So we. That's also kind of a dog whistle for me, friends. Again, I, I don't know Paula Morgan personally. I've only seen a few of their videos, but the more they keep talking, the more I'm like, right, the whole media industry is against Christians. Of course, we don't talk about how the Christian movie industry exists or um, how people like Paula Morgan have a successful YouTube channel where they make money making videos on YouTube, but instead the perspective is we feel like we weren't portrayed fairly. Therefore, there is a grand media bias against all Christians. I just find that hard to believe. I had Luke on and we told the production team, we're not, we're not about it. We're not about coming here and being, you know, giving us the Luke Parker treatment. <laughs> and they, what was their response to that? They're like, oh my goodness, no, 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 no. This is not The Bachelorette. This is a docu-series. Like, this isn't a reality TV show. We want to hear your voice. Like, we want to give you guys a platform to speak and share your thoughts and experiences. That is not what we're out to do. They reiterated, we are after a 360 mm -hmm. view of this situation, but not only this situation, like you said, we want you, Paul and Morgan, to come and represent what it's like to be modern Christian content creators and bring that voice in, bring that side in. And those of you who have watched the documentary, you can decide. Well, we need to rewind and, and tell them. And we are them. about to rewind. <laughs> well, I should note here, I did watch it and that's what they did. They literally went into a segment saying, this idea or these views, uh, fundamentalism, are being presented now through more modern influencers on social media. And then they brought up Paul and Morgan along with a few others. And then Paul and Morgan were on and they were asked about what submission means. And I mean, they they answered the question. They said, you know, I believe I should be under the authority of my husband kind of vibe. That That is, I don't know how else to say it without sounding disrespectful towards Paul and Morgan, but this idea of biblical or godly submission is a classic tenet 
of evangelical fundamentalism, and it ignores the other ways that Christians have interpreted those passages, um, because what they claim to be doing is to be just standing on God's truth. Um, so again, just want to bring up that point. It's, it's very important that we understand this. Um, but I also just want to say this is a, an agenda-driven documentary. Yes, of you course. You make a documentary about anything acting like you know everything about a certain family, a certain person, a certain situation. And just like we have had so many videos made about us, made about our mannerisms, made about our marriage in our family, where the person making the video somehow knows everything. Somehow knows everything about us. That to me was how oftentimes this documentary came across. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know how earlier they make a statement about how bad they feel for the victims. And now they're just kind of discrediting the whole documentary. I, I, I don't know. I mean, four episodes, an hour each had Duggars on the on the documentary explaining what it was like, and the take is just kind of soft for them, kind of to deflect. Um, okay. Um, so let's let's dive right in, Morgan. The story of how we came uh, to be on. Yeah, the show let's let's hop then, in uh, the interviewing process that we had with the team. Yeah, we had a lot of you guys commenting and messaging us when you were watching it being like, did you guys know you were in this? Like they're using your videos and stuff, blah, blah, blah. or why were you in this? It's about the IBLP. So here's the story. We were reached out to uh, over a year ago and I got an email saying they wanted us in this. They wanted to talk to us uh, and see what we could do. I actually ignored the email because I was like, we don't want to do that. Then they sent us messages on all three of our Instagrams and so, and another email, I believe. And so I was like, what do you think? Should we talk to them? Let's just do a Zoom call. So we did a Zoom call with them. They told us about the docuseries. This is what they told us. They said, we're going to talk about the IBLP, but a lot of it's going to be about like the Duggars, the Bates, the Platt, the Platt or the, Plaths. The TLC big family big Christian families and we're going to talk about like reality TV show and how it pertains to Christians and Christian influencers and that's where you guys would come in we would love to just hear your all's experience of being Christian influencers we would love to hear just how it's been what you all have gone through um and get your thoughts on Christians being in the world the influencer world online TV etc and so we were like hmm interesting okay still like, still cautious but like yeah. this could be a really cool thing like yeah. this could be a really neat thing so then they sent us over like the list of all the questions that they were going to ask. Um, and then I believe whether it was on the Zoom call or back and forth in emails, um, we were just kind of sharing like, look, we have a friend, Luke Parker. We don't want to be treated like that. We're not going to be on a show where like we look like total villains, whatever. And they were like, so, you know, the docuseries Lula Rich, that was actually a docuseries that we produced. And that's exactly how we're wanting to do it with this one, which we had watched that. Amazon Prime docuseries um, and really enjoyed it, thought it was super interesting. And I appreciated that docuseries because I felt like it was very much a 360 view of um, just like they interviewed the owners and gave them a voice. They were able to push back on things. They were able to stand their ground, you know. I, I the, still felt like that was had some agenda driven, but right. because we're not fans of multi-level marketing, uh, it was easy for us to be like, yeah, you know, we agree with, with right. most of the agenda, but it still had. A okay, I mean. <laughs> Guys, exactly. So when you agree with the agenda, it's fine. When you don't agree with how you were portrayed, even though it was factual, now all of a sudden it's an attack on you. I mean, I don't know. You sound like you want to have your cake and eat it too. Apparently, a couple minutes ago, agendas are bad. But now for this documentary about uh, Lula Rich, which I've also watched and thought it was really well done, um, agendas are good because they don't agree with that. Also, I should mention that again, like this documentary had had uh, Jill Duggar and her husband on it. They had people who were part of this whole thing on it. Uh, so I, I'm just failing to see, like again, so far what they're so mad about. The the production company sent over the questions ahead of time. They seem pretty transparent in in where their segment would come in. The Christian influencer piece, that's true. So I'm still waiting to kind of see or hear the other shoe drop up. And here's where we were misled like you said it, it yeah. interviewed the so yeah they had people who were still doing that to this day being like i love it i enjoy it <laughs> sure, like sure, you know, sure. whatever there was some some so we were like okay i mean if they really do let us just speak our experience and that's what it is like cool so that's what we agreed to we had no idea you guys how like that it was literally all about the IBLP. I didn't even know what the IBLP was, Institute of Basic Life Principles, until they reached out to in us. Institute in Basic Life Principles. See, there we have it. Um, I didn't even know what that was until they reached out and I had to like Google it. And I knew that the Duggars had a lot of kids, but I didn't realize they were like a part of a thing, whatever, a institute. Um, 
The fact that Morgan says that she had to Google it when they reached out, again, tells me that they were pretty transparent. They told her what they were looking into, and they told her about the Duggars and what they're trying to cover. I, I, I'm still, I'm still waiting to see this shoe drop. And so, like, we didn't, we were like, we don't know a lot about the IBLP, so we can't really like speak on that. And they're like, no, 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 you're gonna be speaking about like what it is to be a Christian influencer. Well, like, well, and I, I, which is true. Growing up, like, we, we touched the surface. Mm-hmm. My, my family touched the surface of it, like, but there was, it was just very, very little. Yeah. Okay, that's a big deal. So, so Paul is saying that his family touched the surface of the IBLP, which which leads me to believe that he at least knew who they were. And again, if you watch any of their stuff on YouTube, it's pretty evident. I mean, it's modesty culture. It is, they do segments where they go to malls, ask people who they say are Christians, what they think about women submitting to their husbands. And when they disagree, the next question usually is, well, do you know what the Bible has to say about this? I mean, that's classic evangelical fundamentalism 101. You appeal to a hyper-literalist interpretation of a couple passages that you then say are therefore clear that women are to submit to their husbands because the Bible says so. Enter the IBLP. You don't have to know who they are to to know that you're drawing or you're drinking from the same waters that they were. And there were things like even talking to my parents before going on the show, they were like, oh, well, this was too extreme and this was too extreme Mm -hmm. so forth. But I mean, there was a little, there was a little. Yeah. So what we agreed to is not what was (laughs) created. Okay. Well, so, so we get there, they fly us out to Savannah, Georgia. And by the way, when we were negotiating the contract that they sent over, um, because we knew in the back of our minds, who knows where this could go. Like they seem, they seem pretty solid, mm-hmm. pretty trustworthy, but who knows? We made sure to uh, add in the contract. I'm not sure how it was articulated, if it was already in there or if we had to like say, no, we want to make sure this is in there. But we say like, we want to make sure that we're allowed to talk about this. And because some contracts have like a non yeah NDA or you, you can't like talk bad about the show. Mm-hmm. We made sure like we're allowed to say what we want about it. We're allowed to share our experience and praise God that we did because mm-hmm. we probably wouldn't be able to do this if we hadn't. And don't you think if the producers had some nefarious purpose to try and trick them into doing this, that they would not agree to them not having an NDA? Again, I'm just trying to make the point. I'm not saying that Paul and Morgan's experience uh, isn't valid or that, that, that they can't feel that way. But they're, so far, the attitude I get is, oh, my God, we were duped. We were asked to come on this show and talk about what we do and our beliefs. And we didn't like the clips that they pulled, I guess. And therefore, we've been manipulated. But I feel like what's happening is they were pretty clear up front. They agreed to a non to to a, you know let Morgan and Paul talk about their experience with without an NDA, and they they still feel like like they were duped. It's interesting. Um. So anyway, we get to Savannah, Georgia. You were twelve months pregnant at the time. Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Oh, twelve months pregnant. <laughs> that would be unusual. Yes, it would be. It'd be a little you. unusual. Um, struggling with nausea. And- Oof. They, uh, I'll just be frank, like they treated us really well. And that's part of the interesting thing about when we were sitting on the couch watching the documentary for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, But they they treated us really well. They were so nice. They were so nice. Seriously enjoyed getting to talk to all of them, the directors, the producers. And then this is one thing that talking to our uh, patron who worked in the industry, she's like, this is very intentional. Mm -hmm. And and it's not like we're idiots. Hopefully we're not idiots to the point where we're like, oh, they love us. Right. But no, they were genuinely really, it felt like friends. It Mm -hmm. felt like we were hanging out with friends. Mm -hmm. Um, the interview process, we're sitting on the couch and it's just like, man, like this is, they interviewed us for four and a half hours, nonstop, (laughs) nonstop, just, just all these. And and we were getting deep. They were asking us some questions that were like, oof, to us, the most scary thing, if you will, was simply like, we're about to go there. We're talking about, um, heavy cultural topics and Mm -hmm. we're, we're sharing what we believe the Bible says we're not holding back. And so in our minds, okay. So, so far we have. We were flown out, we were treated well, we were asked deep questions, we didn't hold back, we gave them our answers, what we believe the Bible says, et cetera, et cetera, and we'll go from there. Documentary is gonna come out, we're representing Christian influencers, we're talking about the Christian faith, mm-hmm. and you know, given our perspective on, on the IBLP and the- And how like Christianity and IBLP are different, and like, yeah, whatever. Well, if there, you know, if there is some overlap, but yeah, the differences, given our mm-hmm. perspective on the, uh, uh, Duggars and so forth. Mm-hmm. It was just some really good conversation. And yeah. they even told us that they were like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, one of the producers came up to me afterwards and she was like, I just want to let you know, like you guys did such a solid job, like explaining your faith and what you stand on. Like you should be very proud of yourself. This is going to look like come across great in the so docuseries. Four, four hours of nonstop interviewing <laughs> deep questions afterwards. They were like, guys, just let you know, like, get ready. Uh, you're about to, 
things are about to like, how do they say it? Oh yeah, they were just like, just like if you have merch, if you have a book, like make sure it's coming out right around this time. Like you guys are about to blow up because this is, of this. This is about to be big for you guys. So that was, that was what we had getting flown out to Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, I think Morgan, now we, we fast forward to sitting on the couch a week ago yeah. when the documentary <laughs> dropped. All right, let's see what they have to say about this documentary. Um, so yeah, let's just, the, the raw emotions. So we're sitting on the couch, we start episode one and a little ways in, I've, I've seen some people commenting to some of the stuff we've been posting on Instagram, sharing their thoughts on the documentary and sharing kind of a similar sentiment of this of like, it didn't take long into the documentary into episode one and for sure into episode two where it's kind of like, oof, this is, um, you know, and, and now let me say real quick, I, I'm not saying that there was nothing, absolutely nothing good that came out of the documentary. Mm -hmm. I think bad actors should be exposed. I think that, um, Meaning bad people. I didn't understand that phrase when he said that. <laughs> bad, bad people that are maybe masquerading as, as good people or as people of the Christian faith. The wolves in sheep clothing should be... They should be exposed. exposed. Victims should be empathized with and heard. That's a good thing. This documentary, um, if there was some good elements in that regard, I, I'm just sharing, like, moving into the second episode, I'm thinking to myself, man, like, how how are they going to, to bring us in to balance out the extremism? Yeah. Like, Okay, so the whole documentary revolves around the Duggars and the IBLP, which the Duggars were huge, a huge piece of. The documentary has several survivors from the IBLP on it. It has uh, Jill Duggar, who is a survivor of her own brother's uh, abuse. It covers how Bill Gothard had multiple allegations of abuse towards young girls. It, it, it does exactly what... Paul says is good. It exposes serious harm that that places like the IBLP were committing and how they were really infusing their belief system all throughout American evangelicalism. Talks about how it went through the SBC, Southern Baptist Convention, and how the Duggars, mainly Jim Bob, used their platform to really blow up their beliefs uh, for a mass audience. And then Paul is shifting now to saying that's, I guess, it's it, it, we were going to be like the balance to that, but the, what what the documentary is trying to demonstrate is how the same ideals that Bill Gothard was preaching, the same ingredients that made that cake, are still being used and being um, ingested through more modern day Christian influencers through social media. And what's fascinating to me is that I don't think Paul and Morgan would disagree with the root beliefs of Bill Gothard or the Duggars. I don't think, I mean, maybe they would be, I'm not sure where they land on birth control, but I wouldn't be shocked if they were like, hey, you know, we think that however many kids God gives us is fine. Or if they, if Morgan said on the documentary that, you know, submission is important as a wife, like these are all key things. And then their, their YouTube videos, skimpy bikinis. Uh, sex before marriage, uh, submit to your husband, divorce. Uh, you know, it's very clear that they are peddling the same ideas. I'm not accusing Paul or Morgan of being abusive or of like abusing people, but what the document what the documentary shows, I think, so brilliantly is that these ingredients set people up, especially women, to be more easily abused because of the authority dynamics in play that they say God has ordained over them. So I, I'm just kind of surprised that they can watch this documentary and still be like, ugh, this was such an extremist a, a documentary. It's covering the Duggars and IBLP. I don't understand what the problem is. Just felt like, man, they are just like going after this and where, where are we gonna fit? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we realize, <laughs> where we're going to fit. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, we're going to fit as a hit piece of literally being lumped in with the IBLP, with extremism, with cultism. Mm -hmm. And here's a funny thing, probably two months leading up to the doc to being asked to be in the documentary, something, I don't know, three months, two months, whatever, we had made a video and people that are fans of the channel probably saw it when the Josh Duggar awful stuff broke we made a video condemning josh condemning that situation calling out the evils of it mm -hmm. and then what do you know like what happens they put a smack dab in the middle of the episode 
where Josh Duggar exposed for all this evil and suddenly we're dropped in the middle. Nope, here's a little here's segment on a little where infiltrating. They're, where they're saying, and here the IBLP and the, the older people passing it down. Now here is the younger generation that is continuing. They literally called it the continue. What is it, continuing? This yeah. is the continuation of that extremism of that the cult same stuff. Same book, new cover. Same book, new cover. <laughs> that, that here's the. New I mean, I would tend to agree with a lot of that. Again, I, I, I ask you, friends, check out their YouTube channel. You you tell me what you think. It is absolutely the same ingredients. And it's, it's the same language. I mean, you watch their videos, what God's word clearly says. What does the Bible say about sex before marriage? I mean, it's the same language. Just because it's more modern or Morgan might wear a tank top now and not a jean skirt all the time doesn't change the ingredients that are going into this. Younger generation that is continuing yeah they made no differentiation is that a word yeah. um between iblp and just christians who are not a part of that who are just living life by the word of god they just lumped everyone in together they talked about the joshua generation and like apparently we're a part of that and like infiltrating politics and infiltrating schools and infiltrating the world the world. radicals the radicals <laughs> being sent out to infiltrate all these fears and we're sitting here like like what's what's the Joshua generation? Yeah, we're just trying we're just trying to live godly lives. Yeah. Yeah, this is an important piece that I think is actually something to to pull out here. A lot of people who peddle these beliefs don't even know how deep their own rabbit hole goes. I believe them. I don't think that they knew who the Joshua generation was, but that doesn't mean that that, that again that, that that they're not drinking out of the same fountain that they that everyone else is right uh this idea of of fighting for christian values in the public square that comes out of places like this now the iblp and joshua generation are not like a monolith but there are a lot of places like this and even more more recently things uh, places like uh moscow idaho where doug wilson is um and others who are or who are focused on homeschooling kids, giving them what they think is a proper education, and yes, training some of them to go into politics to start rewriting laws to make America Christian. Now, I'm not saying Paul and Morgan are part of that directly, but again, they're in the same sphere. They're in this, they're swimming in the same water that those people are, whether they recognize it or not. And suddenly Sorry, we're no. the continuation of the radicals, we're the Joshua generation. We, we're we, being trained by Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar <laughs> to go on and continue there. And what, yeah, that was never said in the documentary. I know she's just fooling around, but I want to be clear here. That was never painted as a direct correlation. Uh, the, the They came in once, I forgot who it was, said, someone said that essentially fundamentalism is rebranding uh, via social media. And then they brought up these folks. And again, if you go on their YouTube channel, and I've said it a few times now, but you can read things about would Jesus wear a mask? And it's pretty much the far right wing talking points about how wearing a mask isn't exactly loving your neighbor or the vaccine and talking to someone who's not even a medical expert about if you should get the vaccine or not. So they have no problem dealing with uh, cultural issues. And from what I have seen, um, landed in places that that far right evangelicals would land in but for them they don't see themselves as as you know a radical or as an extremist uh, just interesting to me job <laughs> one thing before we continue on that that i want to to bring to light i guess one thing that hit me pretty quick was oh this was supposed to be a 360 view mm -hmm. there was not a 360 this was a 180 which paul accidentally wrote, <laughs> <laughs> which accidentally wrote. Uh, that's not true right. hold um, on yeah. it's supposed to sorry it's hard to pause this sometimes kristen dumez was in that documentary she gave the 360 view <laughs> uh i don't think that paula morgan realized maybe, maybe they do but i think they're a little ignorant of their own tradition and, and again just what they're a part of because they it was a 360 view they just weren't the other side of this because they're kind of adjacent to all of this that's important 360 view of here's the cult-like behavior here's where they've deviated from the word of god but here's christians that are choosing to stand on the word of god rejecting that but still embracing christ-like biblical christianity oh no there wasn't that it was we're all over here mm -hmm. or you've deconstructed like you said mm -hmm. and now you're now you hate the faith, you hate religion, <laughs> you hate God, you hate anyone who claims to be a believer in the word. Oh, uh, they, they, they don't, they just don't see it. And that's okay. Uh, that's, that's fine. They have a right to have a YouTube channel, but they just don't see it. They don't see how Bill Gothard would use the same language they just used. They're just standing on God's word. Bill Gothard would have his proof text. I mean, the wisdom books, you can read them. There are, and now it's a Bible study. 
you can read them. They're all full of verses. So we're actually what we're what we're watching here is fundamentalism who disagrees with other fundamentalism and therefore they don't see themselves as fundamentalist. That's what this is. And then people who deconstruct, right? We just hate the faith. Like people like me who renegotiated my faith and left the more conservative evangelical framework that I came from, um, it's impossible for me to still be a Christian even though I am by their standards because I would not agree with their take on marriage or uh, queer affirmation or the pro-life, pro-choice conversation. That would start putting me outside the faith in their perspective, which again, it really is fundamentalist versus fundamentalist. That's, I hate those people. That's sure what it felt like to me. You guys, you know, can decide. You're out how. to destroy those types of people. You've created entire YouTube channels and TikToks to destroy people that live like that. <laughs> and, and that's where I was going to go with. So let's look at the the sources. Is that what you call them? The, yeah, the whatever. Yeah. The different people the being experts that the ex interviewed. The experts, the different people being interviewed, and, and I, I'm not. It was pretty quickly that I realized. Oh man, like many, most of these people are like we were just sharing, like they're no longer Christians. They are struggling in life. And, and I, I want to be careful of like, there were victims and those victims, huh. it's so sad to see that they've rejected Christianity altogether. Right? I don't know where they oh all my are God. on the journey, but Sorry. it was Ugh. quick that it was. Uh, wow. All of the people who were interviewed that were not like academics were survivors of Bill Gothard. And the take here is the saddest thing is not that they were abused, um, it's that they are no longer Christian. Again, it just shows like what's important to them, right? The, the issue isn't so much that they are literally crying on camera saying how difficult it's been trying to rewire their brain, especially for the women to think that they're not just, um, you know, men's property. Uh, and that Bill Gothard abused some of them at the age of like 14 or 15. The issue is that they walked away from the faith. See, the responsibility is still on the on the survivors, right? Instead of, wow, look at the damage Bill Gothard has done. Look at the damage this rhetoric has created and has pushed people out because of the abuse. That, by the way, Bill Gothard never faced accountability or justice for. It's important to recognize. Wow. Like these people, uh, I, I just... Some of the IBLP, ex-IBLP that they interviewed. The, the experts, the Fundy Fridays, uh, Fundy Fridays, Jen, who was an expert on us. <laughs> Somehow wow. she's an expert on us because she makes a one hour long plus creepy video about us. <laughs> um, but the, I was just like, man, I thought we were going to get a well-rounded view mm -hmm. of the sources. Uh, but you have people that to me are actually the fringe on the other side. They're trying to make Christians look like fringe extremists, lumping us all in with IBLP, trying to make Morgan and I, Girl Define, Nathan Sutton, these Christian TikTokers, they're trying to lump us all in, which if you watch that part, literally, it's just showing little five second clips of intense things that have been said in a video. Which let me say something really quick. I am not mad about the clips that they used. Okay. Uh, I'm not mad about like the parts of the interview that they used. The fact that they only used, you know, two minutes of the four and a half hours that we filmed is annoying, but whatever. I'm not mad though at what they chose to, to use. I stand by everything that I said and every little clip that they played. That's not what I'm mad or annoyed about. Then what's I'm the upset issue? upset and frustrated at how just badly and disgustingly they lied to us, which, you know, Whatever, it is what it is, but yeah, people were- Listen, friends, maybe I misheard something. I, I'm failing to see where the lie was. I feel like, again, they gave them the questions ahead of time, told, told them it's a documentary on the Duggars and the IBLP and, and families like that, and they wanted their perspective on this stuff. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not sure where the lie is. Like, you said what you said, and I'm like, yeah, I said what I said. That's not what I'm mad about at all in those clips. <laughs> so they played, yeah, and then they literally did like the, like yeah. showing just lots of different- <laughs> Uh, radical Joshua generation, uh -huh. uh, far right extremist Christian homeschooling, blah, blah, blah. But I'm sitting here thinking their sources are fringe on the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. They seem hurt. They seem confused. They seem like their lives, they're struggling. Rad why are they struggling, Paul? Like, I really want to know, why do you think they're struggling? Because they lost their faith or because they were abused? And I'm not using the you know the the s part of the abuse thing because of the censors i don't want to get caught on youtube but many of them were essayed we'll put it that way okay maybe that's why hmm, maybe that a lot of them grew up in a place where their highest calling was to serve under a cult leader who stood on quote unquote the the word of god same language that you would use 
So do you understand why people are hurt? And they're not struggling because they've lost their faith. They're struggling because they were brought up on a poisoned faith and they're trying to detox. Voices, and like you mentioned this, um, you know, they, they're given this big spotlight to Fundy Fridays who represents this Reddit hate group of trolls mm -hmm. that hate Christians. And they're, she's one of their big sources. I'm, I'm just saying. It's weird. We're getting a pretty good feel for the agenda of this documentary. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I, <laughs> Wow. How you watch that documentary and see this is wild to um, me. As we already said. Or think about it this made way. Christian influencers out to be these nut extremists, problematic. Well, one of the issues I feel with this docuseries was that, you know, they were trying, you know, people look at it and they're like, they were exposing the IBLP. They were giving a voice to the victims. They were, you know, calling out Bill Gothard and Jim Bob Duggar and the Duggars in general. And like, in a sense, yes, they were, but also this docuseries was lumping every person who thinks that homeschooling is a good thing. Every person that thinks that going to church is a good thing. Everything, everyone that thinks that an order of uh, leadership is a good thing is extremist, fringe, terrible, like awful people and that's just not true like iblp took you know submission and ran with it and took it way off into the weeds they took but why though Th this is the problem when fundamentalists critique other fundamentalists you can easily argue that bill gothard was just taking the clear teachings of paul uh literally i don't permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over man uh women submit to your husbands and yeah, I mean, men, you should lead them and, you know, as Christ left the church, but women are called to submit. I, so why is that too far with how that was expressed? But for Morgan, she's just standing on the truth of God's word. See, that's the problem. It's like fundamentalists all think they're standing on the objective truth of God's word until they, they disagree with each other. And then one person's too extreme, even though the other person's like maybe two notches to the left of that. It's still in the same ballpark. You're still sitting in the same row. You're just in different seats a little piece of the bible and ran with it and used it for control and abuse and that's not okay and that's why we've preached for so long on the channel i'm looking at my shirt uh, in the world but of the word but specifically like go back to the word of god make sure you're testing things with the word of god make sure you're lining things up with the word of god morgan and i have not been perfect we've been on the youtube channel seven years now wow. we're trying to figure out how do we obey god's word in practical life applications and we're trying to relay our thoughts to you guys we haven't been perfect but we're trying mm -hmm. um you know, I do want to, I want to be fair to Paula Morgan, okay? And I, I want to make sure that, that that you audience understand. I don't think that Paula Morgan are like intentionally trying to do bad things or that they are doing bad things in a lot of ways. Listen, I, I was there for most of my life. I get it, right? You want to be obedient to God. You want to understand the Bible and you want to live the radical life that Jesus has called us to live. And the scriptures tell us how to do that. And, and so you follow it. I get all that. I really do because I lived it and believed it for a long time. Um, however, I just don't think that Paula Morgan really understand the world that they're a part of and that even though they think they're just being true Christians, they're part of a very narrow slice of the Christian historical tradition. Uh, and they are probably pretty confident that most people outside of their slice and the people that they hang out with and do work with are probably not true Christians because they're not as obedient to the word of God as Paul and Morgan are, even though they don't realize that they are simply interpreting the Bible like all of us do and giving um, importance or hierarchy to certain verses over others like all of us do. So because we're trying, because we're trying to live by the Bible, now we're demonized by these sources being interviewed by um, the people behind this documentary. So they get to decide. I mean, the Duggars were trying to live by the Bible too. I mean, they, they would say the same exact thing. So again, what's the difference? They are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing with the Joshua generation, for those of you who watched it, um, literally after showing ourselves, like I said, Girl of Fine, Nate and Sutton, Miss Midwest, a handful of creators, it literally the next line was, this is the Joshua generation. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was like the most fair place to splice that because like Paul and Morgan have said, I don't think a lot of those people or influencers know who the Joshua generation is. I think if I'm trying to frame it in a positive light, the documentary producers were just trying to show how there's another generation of um, people who are kind of steeped in this Christian fundamentalism in America, uh, maybe without even seeing it that way. But yeah, I would agree. It wasn't exactly the most accurate take.
One thing that they're really pushing was this Joshua generation. They're getting trained up in these radical ideas and then they're getting sent out into politics, into the spheres of influence. Mm -hmm. And they're overturning Roe v. Wade and they're taking blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, so were these militant Joshua generation going and taking over society? I'm looking at what the left is doing, what liberal colleges are oh, doing, here we go. what the LGBTQ activists are doing, right. what the pro-choice activists are doing. They're saying that, that we're doing that. I don't even know what the Joshua <laughs> generation is. Yeah. These people are far more radically trying to to do that in my to opinion. To what? Is that that? Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, listen, we cover Christian nationalism a lot on our podcast and in other content, so I'm not gonna go through a deep dive here for sake of time. What I will say though, is that if you think that fighting for the equity of other people groups, like queer people, and 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 fighting for their right to be recognized in the public square, and for us uh, to support the fact that, that, that people are queer, if you see that as a radical thing, I'm not sure what to tell you. Uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned despite every single religious group in America except white evangelical Protestants um, being against it. The only group in America who were for it were white evangelical Protestants. Um, and again, if these people, if they knew what they were a part of, they would recognize that things like Project Blitz exist um, or things like the Joshua Project or whatever it's called exist. And that there are institutions that are training up young, predominantly white people to become politically radicalized, to take America back for God. This is documented in books like The Power Worshippers by Catherine Stewart, Preparing for War by Bradley Onishi, um, uh, Taking America Back for God by Samuel Perry and Andrew Whitehead, um, White Evangelical Racism by Anthea Butler. And, and then there's also older historical takes like The Bible Told Them So by Russell J. Hawkins. So I'm just making the point here that that when I hear people say that, well, the left, I'm like, mm. We're already gonna. We're, now we're pulling from the culture war rhetoric that right wing fundamentalism is steeped in, uh, where they see any equity to other people groups who they would quote unquote not agree with. That's putting it lightly, um, as an infringement on their rights and as some kind of takeover. That's why I have a hard time believing this. It's just all hogwash. Yeah, it was really, really weird, like how they try to portray in every episode, just like how Christians are trying to take over the world. So are leftists. So are this group. So are these people. Like, sorry, that that's just. I mean, it's just not the case. Let's not forget Paula Morgan. With all due respect, it was Christians, the Christian flags that stormed our Capitol building on January six, trying to legitimately overthrow our government because they believe that the election was stolen. Um, that's not happening. Uh, you know, with atheists or Muslims or Buddhists um, or even progressive Christians. It comes from a specific place. And I recommend you approach this topic with curiosity instead of with like defensiveness, because I just don't think you know the world that you're a part of. Oh, how dare Christians want to be in politics? How yeah. dare Christians want to raise their children and homeschool them? How dare Christians want to be a part of the world that they live in? Like what? And they were making it seem like all of these like, yeah, the, the homeschooling families, the Christians with big families, the wives that do desire to submit to their husbands, as it talks about in the Bible, all these things. There it is. Th there it is. There it is. That is Bill Gother teaching. Like, I'm not saying that, that these people are going to lead a cult anytime soon, but that is what we're talking about. Paul and Morgan, that is it right there. And listen, I want to be clear about something. I want to make it really emphatically clear in this response video. If Paul and Morgan are like, hey, we think this is the best way for our marriage to operate. And Morgan is happy and content and likes the relationship and she's not being abused and it's consensual. Do what you want. Like if you want to submit to your husband and you think the Bible tells you so, that's fine. The problem is that I think people like Paul and Morgan and Bill Gothard insist that the only way to have a biblical, God-ordained, God-blessed marriage is if women submit to their men and men lead. They only give you one option. There's no flexibility. I mean, by their own standard, my wife and I, who have a great relationship, who are very egalitarian, uh, would not be having a God-honoring marriage because my wife doesn't quote-unquote submit to me. Instead, we work together to make decisions, and we 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 both try and give and take at the appropriate times. So I'm just trying to make that. The, I was trying to point that out. Like, yes, Paul, you just said one of the key elements that made the IBLP and the Duggar family operate. Just just horrible, mm -hmm. and see where it leads. And it's like, okay, what about all the awesome homeschooling experiences right. and homeschooling families and kids that went up through homeschooling that had great experiences. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that, that doesn't exist. I mean, it's gaslighting, honestly. Okay, this is, I'm, I know I'm pausing a lot here, but really quick, this is a great example of how um, 
people can watch others being victimized by the tradition that they're a part of and will then deflect and twist it and make it seem like, like they're somehow the ones being victimized here. So Paula Morgan, as far as I know, in that were not victimized in the IBLP. They were not assaulted by Joshua Duggar. Um, they were not abused um, in homeschooling. So this documentary pulls out the thread of how these places are not what they seem on the surface for so many. And the response by Paula Morgan is not, oh, that is terrible. What could be causing this? It's, oh, this documentary makes it seem like all of us are just a bunch of nut jobs and that homeschooling is automatically bad, even though it never says that ever. But it does point out how this kind of fundamentalism does breed abuse very often. And for them, that's just too much. It is. What about the husband and wife, the family dynamics, where it's actually done in a healthy mm -hmm. biblical way and there is a healthy submission. And I'm glad they left that part in, even though it's like to make you look like, oh, <laughs> right. Morgan submits. We're, we're going to leave this in there. It's like, no, I'm, I'm glad that they left that in there. Oh, man. Right. Great. Yeah. Um, all so what's of these the problem? good experiences. It's just gaslighting the millions mm -hmm. of Christians that are doing it right or that are trying their best and doing pretty stinking good. Yeah. But no, you're going to turn out like Josh Duggar. You're going to turn out like the Duggar situation, you're going to turn out like Bill no. Gothard and all of the no, things that he got no, wrong. You're no. going to be right there, and that's the way you're going to end up. No, the documentary is pointing out that there's no accountability, Paul, in these spaces. Joshua Duggar assaulted his sisters. The parents knew about it, and they worked with the sheriff to hide it to make sure that that the show went on and then coerced, I think it was Jinger and Jill Duggar, to go on national television and lie about it. That's the problem. The problem is that Bill Gothard um, sex, uh, essayed uh, multiple girls and he's not in prison for it. And it was covered up. That's what, that's what I don't get about people who have this perspective. It's not about everything is always bad. It's that when bad things happen, the system is designed to protect the people in power. And that led to Joshua Duggar being convicted of having what some of the FBI agents called the most heinous, heinous images they've ever seen when it came to why he was arrested for child abuse material. So how about that, Paul? How about that, Morgan? How about you have some empathy for the victims and what they went through? And maybe if you really believe that this stuff leads to human flourishing, you would be on team, whatever we must do, leave no stone unturned to make sure that this kind of horrible, evil abuse does not happen in these spaces. But instead, Paul and Morgan, the YouTube influencers, are the victims of all this because of the radical left agenda trying to, that I guess stands against, in their mind, Christianity. No, I reject that. Yeah, it's interesting, um, you know, Ginger Volo wrote a book, Becoming Free Indeed, and she talks about her experience, and I think that her book is just an incredible, uh, choice to listen to or read uh instead of the docuseries or if you're gonna watch the docuseries like also read her book because i think she did just a beautiful job in sharing the downfall of iblp the downfall of bill gothard Downs, and downsides downside downsides the, yeah the downsides, bad stuff the bad stuff um but then just redirecting to the gospel and that's what this docuseries is void of that's what every docuseries about any downfall f downfall downside no downfall Downfall is like they ended up getting swashed. Yeah, the downfall of Hillsong. I don't know. You guys know what I'm trying to say. Like that that is what is void of every one of these docu series is there's no pointing to the gospel. There's no interviewing people who came out of this but are now even stronger in their faith that are now truly walking with the Lord. Like Ginger shares in her book, like she had to disentangle herself from the fears that the IBLP placed in her life and not deconstruct though completely from the faith, and from she, the truth of yes. God and the gospel. And she Okay, let's pause there. This is another very important point. Listen, I I I hope Ginger Duggar continues to disentangle her faith, okay? And I'm not one to um to really go after uh survivors of really horrific situations. So this is not an attack on Ginger, but this I think is a great telltale sign of what they think the gospel is. From what I can tell, Paula Morgan seem to be a little more reformed. They seem to be kind of against like the more prosperity, charismatic stuff. Um, and that makes sense because Jinker Duggar is currently attending John MacArthur's church. Now, what's to me what is wild about that is that John MacArthur, 
there were several well-sourced news articles by legitimate journalists documenting how John MacArthur's church had three different people, two of which were pastors, who were accused of um, abusing, saying their own children. And the more recent story is of a man named I, uh, John Gray and his wife, Eileen Gray. Eileen Gray went to the elders complaining of physical abuse. The elders insisted that she stays with her husband. Remember, this guy, John Gray, is on staff at John MacArthur's church. It then comes out later that John, uh, I'm sorry, that, uh, that um, yeah, that John Gray is, um, is actually essaying his children. He gets arrested. Meanwhile, John MacArthur ends up publicly shaming Eileen Gray publicly. Now, this is before the, the allegations of essay came out because she would not go back with her husband who was abusing their children at the time. So, Jinger going to John MacArthur's church, I don't know how it's any better than Bill Gothard. And by the way, John MacArthur is very clear that, that women are to submit to not just their husbands, but to all men. You can look up the articles on this. So is that the true gospel we're talking about here? Any comment, Paula Morgan, on, on the legitimate um, stories from the survivors of John MacArthur's church that John MacArthur shamed a woman who would not who would not stay with her abusive husband? That man was put in prison for essaying his own children, and John MacArthur wrote letters to Mr. Gray in prison saying, what a what a gift it is for your prison ministry? Come on. I mean, this is a, a classic example of what we're talking about here. This is why it's hard to believe you. It's hard to believe you really feel for these survivors, but you have no problem with like Jinger going to a church with like some serious SA abuse behind the scenes that John MacArthur to this day has never acknowledged. And the evangelical machine has only protected John MacArthur. Come on, I don't want to hear it an awesome point of making sure that was known i have disentangled is that the word you said yeah disentangled. i've disentangled to get back in line with the word of god i'm not deconstructing but what did the documentary documentary portray unless you've deconstructed then you're part of the problem or look we've all deconstructed and it's like oh so we're supposed to emulate your all's lives mm -hmm. like i'm sorry mm -hmm. uh, so we get to choose between these sources over here i'm not saying every single one but like uh you guys and mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, yes, they had Jill and her husband on the docu series, and I would be interested to hear because Jill has not really said anything about the docu series since it's come out. She posted and just said, "Maybe you watch the documentary." I've got a book coming out called "Counting the Cost," um, but I would be interested to know, like, if she knew that this was the direction that they were going to take, or if they kind of shared uh, what they did with us. I don't know. Did did they do something similar with her that they did with us? Yeah, and I also wonder if maybe she obviously not because she had a lot a lot more airtime but right, you yeah. know what i mean oh like, right, right, they can... right yeah but i wonder if you know she's under a contract where she can't talk about it who knows but and maybe she doesn't have an issue with it at all and that's totally fine um i will say it's interesting because the way she was um portrayed on the docuseries it does seem like she's still working through things with her family again and that's totally fine um and it was clear that like jim bob did some messed up things to their ch his children to jill and her husband not paying her for seven years of her adult life like that's disgusting and money hungry power hungry and he needs to be held accountable but like ginger in her book opens up starts it out with look i had an incredible childhood like my parents loved us and raised us well and poured into us they didn't get everything right but all in all like my parents did a very good job um i haven't finished her book yet i'm still on it i mean i, I friends it's interesting to me that so far maybe morgan addresses this later so if she does i'll stand corrected but the big issue that sticks out to her about jill is that she wasn't paid not that her own brother essayed her and her dad protected the brother for the sake of a TV show? Weird. In it, a few more chapters to go, but she and her and Jill just like are kind of whether the docuseries portrayed her differently and like she feels similarly to Ginger or so, we'll never really know until her book comes out and we can read that. But I just thought that that was interesting how kind of they're different right now yeah. in how they view their parents, which is totally fine. They could have had different experiences. Yeah, that's true. So hearing these accounts of you know all these people saying i went through the iblp and i'm not discounting their accounts because we, we've had conversations with people who themselves have been through the iblp some very messed up stuff mm -hmm. very messed up stuff yeah um and listening to that it did make me question like okay let me let me examine how how i was raised even good, if maybe good. i didn't uh we as a family didn't embrace all these iblp things like we still had strict modesty standards we had strict dating standards we believed 
and really lived out how the Bible talks about so-and-so. We were homeschooled. So I'm like sitting here examining things, thinking through things. Good, good. And even asking myself, okay, were, were we extreme? And then I'm like, but where are areas where Christians should be extreme and will be seen as extreme by non-Christians? Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about it. It talks about being hated by the world. It talks about being a stench in the nostrils of certain people who don't like the gospel. And so I'm like, where, where do I just want to embrace if you want to call it extremism, mm -hmm. where do I want to embrace it and actually just wear it proudly? Mm -hmm. There it is. In the beginning of this, you know, dialogue or this monologue with them, you know, they were, oh, we're, we're painted as extremists and like, you know, this is so bad and such an exaggeration. And here we are, you know, 35 minutes into it and Paul says the quiet part out loud. Where should I embrace extremism? Where should I be extreme? The world's going to hate us. This is like the cycle of fundamentalism. It's like a, it's a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy, right? Because they have views that end up harming a lot of people. They kind of deflect or they, you know, they say, well, it's not the whole system. What about people who have, who have went through this and have come out really happy, um, et cetera. And then they say, well, also we want to be extremists. It's not, it's not bad to embrace extremism. And then people go, okay, you're an extremist. And they go, oh my God, you're persecuting me for my faith. I mean, that's kind of, I'm, I'm giving a characterization, but that's kind of the take here. So, I mean, thanks for being honest, Paul, but this is exactly why <laughs> TLC or whoever, oh, sorry, Amazon, uh, interviewed you, um, because you're a continuation of the extremism that is shown in this documentary, maybe not all of it, maybe you have a different threshold for a modesty standard, like I said, but again, make no mistake, it's the same ingredient. Pride month, baby. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, wow. sorry, I think you just compared being an extremist uh, to pride month, but okay. Extremism is simple biblical obedience. It's denying yourself. Oh, Taking wait, hold on, let's back that up. Let's, let's back that up, I kind of paused weird. What did he say? Proudly. Mm -hmm. Pride month, baby. Uh, but you know, uh, sometimes extremism is simple biblical obedience. Mm. It's denying yourself. Do you hear this? Taking up your cross and following God. Mm -hmm. And I was reading today in the book of Acts and Paul is about to go to Jerusalem and he knows it's not going to be pretty for him. And he's like, I don't count my life as anything. Like I'm, I am, mm -hmm. I'm blessed. I am honored to be poured out for the gospel. That's extreme because in today's society and with many of these sources that were interviewed, I shouldn't do this, but the sources <laughs> that I was not largely impressed with at all, huh. they would say, oh, Survivors. no, it's about your happiness, Apostle Paul. What are you doing? You're being an idiot. You're being an extremist. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm willing to embrace elements of extremism. Yeah. To the world, Christianity is extreme because like Paul said, it's dying to ourselves every day and picking up our cross. That's extreme to the world. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Um, jeez, I, I, I'm not going to unpack all this here, friends. I mean, you, you hear it and I know a lot of us grew up this way, but I just want to point out that Paul and Morgan make money talking about this stuff. So, you know, the apostle Paul was willing to literally die and give up his rights for the sake of the other. While I have found that people in the Paul and Morgan space tend to use that as a way to defend their rights at the expense of the other. Uh, so just something to point out. We, live, we serve a God of an upside down kingdom, my pastor said one time, and I thought that that was so good. It never makes sense to the world because the world is self first, self first, and God, Jesus. Well, I mean, the second commandment does say, love your neighbor as yourself, to be clear. This is serve first, others first. And I thought to myself, they could come in and make a documentary and get their group of sources and come in any of our churches, any of the solid biblical Christians that are watching this video right now, come into their church and make it look like dun, dun, a, a dun, cult uh -huh. documentary. We're exposing this church, literally. Put any intense music behind anything and it sounds crazy. And pull five second clips. Make a and, girl be like, and then I had to pee. <laughs> and then, um, clips and then say, and this church believes this about the LGBTQ. See, extreme. And it's like, oh, that's what the Bible says, like we still love these people, but here's what the Bible says. They believe this about women. Uh, this is, this is, they, uh, I highly doubt Paul and Morgan are watching this. You're telling on yourselves. You're telling on yourselves here. You are essentially proving the whole point of the documentary, right? That like you and others are continuing this belief that you're just standing on God's word, even though you're actually interpreting it through a specific framework that, that privileges your rights at the expense of someone else.
That's what this is. And Bill Gothard did that. Bill Gothard is a manifestation of that. Bill Gothard was the one who was worshipped, who was followed, and he used the language of good Christians serve. So I'm not saying that every person who believes that is Bill Gothard, but you can see how quickly this language can be weaponized, right, to keep people, especially young women, under the thumb of men who are predators. Right. Oh, well, we believe that children are valuable in the womb. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not buying it. To the um, world, it's extreme. To Christians, it's just life. <laughs> I will be say, to me, your views are pretty extreme. <laughs> and I'm a Christian, but I don't think you would see me as a real Christian, which that's how fundamentalism is, which is fine. And we, we stand, like Morgan's already said, we stand by what we said in the documentary. We stand by God created man and woman. We believe that life is uh, valuable in the womb. We're, we are strongly pro-life. If you want to make that seem extreme, go for it. We believe that homeschooling is an awesome option. And that's what we plan to do with Luca. Ain't nobody going to be raising my kid but us. And, and that's, by the way, that's fine. But you want those things enforced throughout society, right? You want other women not to have the choice when serious pregnancy concerns happen. You, it's not that it's no one is forcing you, Paul or Morgan, to get an abortion or to send your kids to public school. But there are forces in the world that you participate in that are working through the legislation process to make people funnel in to that way. There are people who want to see public schools shut down and want to see private schools and homeschooling as the only true option in society. There are people who worked like hell to stack the court intentionally to overturn Roe v. Wade so people would not have the choice to handle their pregnancy how they think they need to between them and their doctor. There are people in your spaces who are introducing anti-queer legislation, 413 pieces, by the way, over the, over the past quarter in 2023, um, to minimize the rights and the access to actual health care or to human flourishing that queer community deserve to have. So this is not about you having rights to do what you want. There is no law telling you how you must run your marriage. There is no law telling you that you must uh, abort your child, uh, you know, or whatever. There's no law saying that you can't homeschool your kids. But for you to allow other people to live ways that you wouldn't and then be recognized by that in society is seen as like an infringement on your rights. I'm not saying Paul and Morgan directly, but I'm saying that's how the world that they're a part of operates in. You know, they played that kind of, <laughs> yeah, amen, that kind of goofy <laughs> clip where I'm like, talking kind of funny and we're at the creation museum oh yeah and i was like well, this is what we believe i do believe that <laughs> i reject all of this uh evolution stuff that they <laughs> have not found fossils for i reject it. i believe in creation i believe a biblical account that's what i believe and i'm not Oh my God. I mean, this is fundamental. Paula Morgan, I, I, I mean this with all sincerity. I'm sure you're great people. I'm sure if you and I got coffee, we, we have a lot in common. But this is fundamentalism. Going to the Creation Museum and saying we reject evolution and Ken Ham and Six Day Literal Creation is, is the only right way because the Bible is classic textbook fundamentalism. And I'm not saying you can't be that way, but just admit what, what you're a part of. You know, apologize and shrink back and be like, oh, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to try to save face for these people because I care so much about what people think about me. I don't. Well, they made me look extreme. I don't really believe I do embrace some forms of some forms of evolution. I do actually believe that women should be able to choose. But like, uh, no, Paul's all I over the place here, said, but they were dishonest in what they told us in the way that they portrayed us. OK, so earlier throughout this video, you heard them say multiple times they tried to paint us all like a bunch of extremists and like this is all just a big cult. And then at the end of this video, again, I think Paul maybe is more honest, even if it's subconscious, where he's like, yeah, I'm not going to cave. I, I do have these views. I'm not going to back down or or succumb to the cultural whims. OK, like so you're an extremist, Paul. Like, yes, you don't believe like in in the and what the science tells us about about how we got here so far, you had said say that's a lie. And Genesis one or two, they're different creation stories. Um, is the literal six day creation account of how the world came into being and screw the science. Okay, listen, I don't use the word extremist derogatory. That's just a very extreme view to have. It would be like you telling me I think the Earth is flat because the Bible talks about going to the corners of the Earth. It's like okay. 
Paul, you can have that view. I'm not going to throw you in prison for believing that. Um, that's an extreme view. It's also a fringe view. And also, if you if you try to force legislation to make schools and pu- pu- public schools teach that as a viable option um, compared to the earth being round, I would say you can't do that because it's, it's patently not true. And then you would say, oh my God, you're infringing on my religious liberty and this is an attack by the left to make me seem like I'm an extremist. It's like, okay, now we're full circle. I'm not mad about what we said in the video or in the docu-series. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Everybody just take a breath. <laughs> Thank you. I um, will, Paul. They tried to demonize conservative Christians, lumping us in with hyper-fundamentalism and a movement that ultimately added to scripture, which we've already stated. The IBLP, they were turning man-made laws ultimately and trying to act like they were straight from the Bible Man. when they weren't. They were trying to make Bill Gothard <laughs> be like, here's this prophet. And so what he's saying, these principles, this is scripture. When... That's John MacArthur, bro. I mean, that that's any titan of, of the evangelical megachurch world. That's John MacArthur. That's Elisa Childers for some people. Again, fundamentalists are <laughs> uh, fundamentalist versus fundamentalist. It wasn't. It was beyond scripture. And that's where you get problematic. And they were trying to lump us in with that and other Christian influencers and homeschoolers and conservatives and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, the IBLP did not seem to be gospel focused. Guys. We need to be living lives that are gospel focused, be pointing back to script to the gospel, to the, the gospel. gospel of Jesus Christ and the great. Just want to point out that on the IBLP workshop um, um, website, which I'm currently I have pulled up on my other screen here. The first thing you see is new family workshop affirming biblical foundations. This is this is like this is classic human life created in God's image. How can I meditate on scripture? Hear thy the instruction of thy father. But where are false prophets? They have this. Paul and Morgan have the same type of videos on their own channel. They literally have a, a video I'm looking on right now. Harmless witchcraft. Um, uh, let's see. What's, what's another one I saw that I'm, I'm trying to find that I thought was perfect. It was on like, uh, uh, I can't find it now, but there was one with like, it's a picture of Joel Olstein and a picture of this uh, uh, Mike. Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, the American gospel. You know, so again, they, they do the same exact thing. Um, it, it, <laughs> they just don't see it. So, okay that he has had on us sinners and now we are able by believing in him to inherit eternal life it's not workspace there's nothing you can do Christ but it is workspace you. it is it, it, it is workspace hold on i'm sorry i know i'm pausing a lot friends thank you for bearing with me this is i think kind of like a trojan horse because the, the people will say it's by grace you're saved but then when you have different viewpoints than they do or you have different se- uh, ethics sexually than you than, than you do or than they do well the bible's clear well you know hey r- repentance leads to you know proof that you're really a christian and repentance looks like this and if you don't have this kind of repentance you're not really a christian so again all things kind of funnel back to their worldview and their fundamentalism amen amen guys give this video a thumbs up if you're here like wow that was actually pretty good stuff and i'm i uh, support what paul and morgan are largely what paul and morgan are saying here you don't have to agree with everything we've said all right, well, we'll pause there, friends. Hey, thanks. This is the whole video. They say a few more things and they wrap up. I hope that this was helpful for you. And listen, I don't think, again, I'm not here to dehumanize Paul and Morgan. I'm not here to to start some kind of war with them. I I, I know very little about them besides what I've seen on YouTube and, and this response video and them on the Duggar documentary. But I, I just hope that people recognize that like there is a danger from my vantage point to this like Christian conservative influencer culture. And I would even go so far as to say any Christian that is claiming to be someone who speaks as an authority on what the Bible says, who isn't trained or at least having people who are trained on this stuff academically, I think it's kind of dangerous. I do my best not to um, go too far into that world whenever I'm talking to you, unless I have like a scholar with me, because I'm not trained. I don't have a, a degree in 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 deep you know, Bible academic studies or anything like that. So I don't make claims that like, oh, well, the Bible is clear or God's word says, because I can't say I've actually know enough to make that determination or not. And I think sometimes with people like Paula Morgan, these like this influencer culture, we have people who I don't know, I couldn't find anything on their education. I don't know if they're really the people that have the um, awareness of even the complex nature of the Bible to make such claims like, well, the Bible is clear. Bill Gothard was standing on man-made principles. We're just standing on the word of God. There's so much beneath that. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, you can share it. You can subscribe to our channel. 
I'll probably put this on a podcast too, so you can listen to the audio version of this. I'll talk to you all next time. See you later.